To break down what's behind this latest siege by the far right is the nation's legal correspondent, Ellie Mistel. Ellie, welcome back to Amplified, friend. It seemed like our farmers, particularly black farmers, were finally about to get that support that they've been wanting for so long with this debt relief program. It sounds like a good plan. Can you tell us a little bit about the specifics of how this money would work? Yeah, so as, as your last guest, as Mr. Boyd eloquently put it, this is about debt relief that was already given to white farmers over the course of generations, right? So you're a white farmer, you're in Idaho or Iowa or whatever they grow stuff. I don't really know, I'm from Queens. But you know, you're growing stuff and something goes <laughs> bad. There's a hurricane or a tornado or aliens or whatever. And now you're, you're, and now your farm's in trouble, right? You go to the bank, you ask for relief on your mortgage payments. You ask for relief on your land because of some catastrophe. And for generations, banks were like, oh, okay, you're, 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 you're good for it, Thurston and Howell the second. And we're gonna let you keep your farm. Mm. You're black, you show up there as, you know, Tyrone Washington asking for your debt relief and the blank says no i'm going to take your farm i'm going to take your house you 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 no longer allowed to be in this business right so that's what happened to black people for generations we've already talked about how the usda systemically discriminated against black and brown farmers just getting a mortgage getting land getting uh, uh the capital necessary to buy farm equipment and you know all the other things that 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 the farm needs right so that was our that's what was addressed with the two billion dollar as you put it the kind of uh, uh uh reparations payment the debt relief payment through the stimulus package that's supposed to address this long-term unfairness in loan forgiveness given to you know to black mm. farmers and not just black farmers right farmers of color latino farmers indigenous farmers you know who also had exactly these kinds of problems so it was saying like all right and again as mr Boyd put it perfectly correctly if you already have a loan if you already have a direct loan from the u.s agricultural department not from a private bank from a government agency we're gonna forgive that debt and then white people showed up and basically did all farms matter you know people <laughs> who have already gotten their money suddenly you're like, oh, but mm. now, now you're actually discriminating against me because now I can't get the money that my family and my, my line has already kind of gotten and <laughs> put into use and capital. And that's where, that's where the legal state of play is. White farmers arguing all farms matter. Black people are trying to get relief that they were systemically denied for for, for generations. Okay, so one, obviously this is ridiculous, right? But... You're the lawyer here and the legal scholar. Does it have teeth, though? Like, how is this about to go, given we know the makeup of the court? So kind of how is this legal battle starting off, and what do you predict is going to go down at the end of the day? Oh, yeah, we're looking at another whites win again situation. Uh, uh, they have a strong legal argument based on previous Supreme Court precedent, which uh, 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 dislikes or disfavors um, racial disparity in loan forgiveness, uh, even um, even if you situate it as as a payback or a payment um, for past unfairness. Uh, the way that the courts tend to look, and I would I would point out the way that white courts tend to look at this stuff, you know, uh, because white people dominate our court system, not just, you know, liberal conservative, but just white people dominate our court system. They, they, they take a, I'm not here to talk about the past kind of approach, right? Like, so they don't really care about the decades and generations of unfairness that laid up to today. They only care about- Isn't the law built on precedent forward. from the past though? That doesn't make sense. It, it's, That's crazy. It's, it's a white court thing. But look, the, the, the black farmers have a good case as well. Like the white farmers have a legitimate case. And I just point out that it's legitimate because so often, especially with these Trump era stuff, like there is no legitimate case, like Trump's executive privilege argument right now, completely illegitimate, right? The white farmers have a legitimate case. Mm -hmm. I just think they're wrong. I think the black farmers have a stronger case, but we don't have an objective court system. We have a court system that Trump mm. and McConnell were able to fill with Republican, hard conservative justices, uh, judges and justices. I mean, if you remember it, think about all of the people that you've heard over the past four or five years who sat down in front of a Senate confirmation hearing and could not tell you whether or not um, Brown v. Board of Ed was rightly decided. 
right? All these people who literally <laughs> can't say that ending segregation was rightly decided are now in charge of deciding whether or not black farmers and brown farmers and native farmers deserve uh, reparation payments, essentially, for debt for what reparation debt forgiveness for their loans. How you think they're going to go? Right. And so one of the one of the problems here is that this this is why you can't let Republicans control the courts. And this is why Biden's inaction in terms of court reform becomes so important. Make mm. no mistake, Aisha, this stimulus program to, to to black farmers, this is one of the only things Biden has done for the people who put him in mm. office. Biden would not have won the ah. primary without black people. And this is one of the this is one of his only plans. He ain't doing anything on voting rights. He's not doing anything mm -hmm, on police reform. Mm -hmm. He's not doing anything in terms of, uh, uh, of real economic empowerment and opportunities for black people mm. in cities. He's not doing anything on education. He's not doing anything for the black community. He's this not is defending one of his this only either, things. though, Ellie. He's not defending it, though, either, right? So you've got, like, 13 lawsuits against this. There's, like, an injunction, whatever's going on, right? There's this legal battle, and this is Biden's signature thing for black folk right now. How come the Department of Justice is not, like, fighting back at this point? Well, they're, they're afraid. They're afraid. And, they're, and again, I'm not... Look, there are a lot of times I'm like, they're afraid because they're cowards. <laughs> they're afraid for legitimate reasons, I would say, because if this goes too far, if you... Put, put like this. You can't let Clarence Thomas get his hands on this case. You can't let Sam mm. Alito get his hands on this case. Because if those hardcore conservatives get their hands on a case like this, not only are you going to lose the case, but the kinds of changes they might make through other laws, other benefits, other entitlement <laughs> programs, it could be it could get real ugly real quick. So the the, ju the Justice Department is trying to be cautious, trying to figure out a way to kind of fight for the plan, which again, is should be a kind of, it's it's pretty, it's a pretty obvious part of the stimulus bill. It shouldn't necessarily be that controversial. They're trying to find a way to fight for the plan without kind of getting it in front of the Supreme Court, where not only do they know they'll lose, but they, they're, they're afraid they'll lose even more than this one case. So that's why they're being cautious here. I can't say that they're wrong so to be because again, the, the 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 problem is not is not their posture in this one case. The problem is that there mm -hmm. is their decision to cede the third branch of government to Republicans. All of the problems flow well. from that poor decision. So essentially, Biden is damned if he does because he did. And then he's kind of maybe damned if he doesn't, because either way, nobody might get any of this debt relief, no matter how you shake it, which makes it all still a disaster. And Biden's still not able to check a box of having done a whole lot of anything just yet for black people. But that's a conversation for another day. Ellie Missile, you're going to come back and have with me. Thank you so much for being here and for breaking all of this down. We so appreciate you on Amplified.